Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about having fun and getting creative with light leak textures. Luminar AI comes with some built in in the templates and I've linked in the comments where you can download even more. So hopefully you'll check out those links and resources. I even created my own template that you can download there. We'll look at that a little bit further on in the show. Before we get started, I want to say hello to Harry, Joseph, Pat, Wolfgang, and German Rodriguez. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm glad to have you here. Let me share my screen and we'll jump right in. So I've got this beautiful photo of a woman walking down a path and she has what I'm going to guess is cherry blossom petals floating in the air and falling around her and it's absolutely gorgeous. Here is the before image and it's a very, very nice picture, but what I wanted to do was pick up on that little bit of lens flare that's going across the bottom of the image and just intensify the atmosphere and the feeling of the image. And this is what I came up with. So this is a template I created. If I go into my templates, it's here called Cherry Blossom and that you can find the link to download it in the, con in the um, description of today's video. So hopefully you go download that, install it, and have some fun with it. There's also a place where you can download those light leak textures. For now, I'm gonna right click on my image, go to adjustments, and I'm gonna revert this to the original. Hey Julie, good to see you. And looks like I just had a little crash there. So give me just a moment, let me reboot. And you know, this has gotta be, I think the first, maybe the second live, or live uh, crash that I've had. <laughs> since Luminar AI came out, maybe the second. So this doesn't happen often, thankfully. Give me just a moment to get, get going again and we'll have some fun. All right, it's loading up on my other, other screen here. One moment. All right, and we're back in business. Let me get this zoomed back in on my screen, back to our image, and you can see we reverted it back to the original. Now what I wanna do is go to my templates and the first thing I want to show you is if we scroll through the ones that appear for this photo, and if you don't see it under for this photo, you can always scroll down and find the experimental category here under portrait. These templates have light leak textures already built into them. So let's go ahead and click on that and see what a few of these look like. You can see they just add a little extra something to the image and it won't work for everything, but they do work well on a lot of things. That one's really pretty. Uh, and they add that a little extra something and you can always back it off if it's a little bit too strong, but I encourage you to go in and play with these and just to get those creative juices flowing. What I'm gonna do is right click on this again. I'm gonna go to adjustments and revert this to the original once more. And I'm going to make my own template and show you exactly what I did. I'm gonna start by going out to templates. And this first category here has scenery and one here called fast fix. And you can see I've already marked it as a favorite. If I go back over to templates and into my favorites, Fast Fix is right there at the top because it's one that I use all the time. It's not just for landscape images. It works on a variety of different images. So let me go ahead and apply that and you'll see that immediately gives us a little bit more contrast, makes the colors pop a little bit more and just does a really nice job of improving the image. Now let's go to the Edit tab and make a few other small adjustments. I'm gonna scroll down and go down to our portrait tools. And we're gonna work a little bit here on her skin and her face She's absolutely gorgeous, but I wanna lighten up her face a little bit and make her eyes sparkle a little bit more. So we'll start with Face AI. I'm gonna pull up the face light. And you'll see that just opens up some of those shadows right there on her skin. Also get onto the section for eyes. Pull up that iris flare quite a bit and the eye enhancer. Now just for good measure, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more, go to our Skin AI and pull up a little bit of skin softening just to make her look her absolute best. I think that looks great. Let's take a look at the before and the after. Really, really nice. Now let me zoom back out. I do think we could work a little bit on the composition, so I'm gonna scroll back up to the top to Composition AI. Let's click on the Composition AI button and see what the AI suggests. Now that's not too bad, but I think I can do better. So one thing you wanna always wanna remember is when you're working with AI-based tools, Take their suggestions, look at them, but make your own critical decisions as to whether or not you wanna run with that choice. In this instance, I'm gonna make a few adjustments, pull this down a little tighter here, and just adjust right about there. Maybe even pull a little bit closer, and then hit return on my keyboard. So now I've positioned my image exactly where I want it. I have a great crop. Let me take a quick look here at the comments and see how everybody's doing here. 
Uh, Jerry wants to know, how do you mark a template as a favorite? That is a great question. Let me pop back over to my templates tab. And for instance, like I said, I marked scenery as a favorite, or um, that fast fix one under scenery as a favorite. If you go down, you'll see that the, the little heart symbol here is empty. Over fast fix, it's full. And that's because I've marked this one as favorite. If I go to clear and sharp, I can hit that heart and, and mark that as a favorite as well. So great question, Jerry. And uh, Julie says she's never had a crash uh, until the last update, and she's had three so far. Uh-oh, that's not good, good, Julie. I hope you've reached out to our support team for them to take a look at that. I'll definitely be doing that after this episode as well. Okay, so back to our edit. The next thing I want to do is add one of those light leak textures. And you can download these with the link that's in the description for today's video. So I'm going to go to Local Masking, click on Add, and we're going to add a texture. Now I'll go down to Load Texture and give this a moment to load up. And I'm, I keep all of my assets on an external hard drive and in a folder called Sky Texture LUT. This is where I put all of my different photo assets. And I know Vanelli recently had an episode where he talked about how he organized his assets. This is how I do mine. And all of those light leak textures are here under borders and textures and here in a category called light leaks. For this particular image, I wanted to find a light leak that worked well and kind of mimicked the colors and the shapes that were already gone, going on in that image. If you recall, there was a swoop across the bottom that was already a bit of a light flare, a lens flare, that was already naturally an image. So I want to click through some of these and see which one I think would work best. I think that one's really nice. I like this little swoop here on the edge. So I'll choose that. I'm going to click open and let that load up. And already that looks kind of nice, but we can do better. I'll click on place texture and we're going to size this so it best suits the image. Now you'll see that my bounding box is already kind of off the screen. So to easily resize that, I'm going to make my image much smaller. And now I can see all of the quarters of that bounding box. I'm going to grab the outside of this and rotate it. So my shape is the same as my image. I'm going to move this down so I can grab those corners and then just start dragging in those corners to resize it. So I am at the same shape is my image. Now that I have the, the side, the width correct, I can grab the top and this just scrunches the texture so it fits the image properly. So there we go, that's pretty good. And now I can hit return on my keyboard to go ahead and commit that. From here, I'm gonna grab my opacity and pull that all the way up to 100 so I can see the full effect. And we can then turn this around, flip it around and see where we want that image to be. Now I am encountering an issue here that some of you might have encountered where the bounding box does not actually show the true edges of where you're placing it. So I'm gonna click on place texture again and I'm gonna drag that up and you can see where the bounding box edges are. It's not properly aligned. Our support team is aware of that, in, of that issue and it hopefully will be fixed in the next update. So from there, I'll hit return on my keyboard and now we can carry on, okay. So now again, let's flip this around and see if we can get it kind of right where we want it to be. And I think probably right about there looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna back off that opacity because I really just want it to add a little bit of extra, a little extra something to the image. You know, I'm gonna flip that around one more time. There, I like that quite a lot. Um, now, as I look at this, I feel like the effect is maybe a little bit strong on her face and on her torso. So we can use our masking tools to lessen that effect a little bit. I'm gonna click on erase and I'm gonna bring my opacity down because I want this to be a very soft, subtle effect. And then I'm gonna just lightly brush this over her face. You can see it just very lightly lessen the effect there. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna just gently brush over her torso here as well, maybe once more. And the effect is cumulative. So when you're using a low opacity, it's going to minimize, or it's going to kind of layer up the effect. So if, since I'm erasing, every stroke is gonna erase another 23%. So it's just gonna layer it up a little bit. And so that way you can kind of seamlessly blend that in there and have a really natural looking effect. I think that looks really, really lovely. The final thing I wanna do here is go to my tools and I'm gonna to add a nice big soft vignette. And this is just gonna draw our eye into the subject and kind of complete the image. So. I take my mount slider, I pull it all the way down to negative 100, and I might pull my size a little bit smaller here. I think the placement is really good, so I'm not going to click on choose subject. The placement, I think, works. I will click in advanced settings, 
pull that feather up nice and high for a nice smooth transition and maybe even add a little bit more of inner light here. And then we'll grab the amount slider and pull that back up and adjust it to the point where it looks natural. I think right about there looks awesome. So let's take a look at our before and our after. I think adding a light leak to this image works really, really well because it matches the atmosphere, that very dreamy kind of mystical feel of these petals falling around. It works really well with the lens flare that was already there. So again, if I take the before, you can see across the front of our torso, there's already a light leak that naturally occurred when the photographer shot this image. We've just taken that and enhanced the feel a little bit to give it a little bit more atmosphere. So I hope you guys like that. It's a lot of fun. I encourage you to both play with the experimental templates that are built in and to grab that pack of light leak textures that I linked to in the description for this video. They're a lot of fun to play with. Like I said, they don't work with every image, but there's certain ones it can just really make the image come alive. Let me take a quick other look here at the comments and make sure that everybody's questions have been answered. Jerry says petals not included. Not in this one, but I'm sure there are petals textures that you could download online to get a similar look uh, without having to have caught that in camera. Let's see here. Uh, Julie says, I got the light leaks, but can't do the cherry blossoms. So what you want to do to install that template that I sent, I sent it in a zip folder. So you'll need to unzip it. On Mac, that just means you double click on it to unzip. On Windows, right click and extract. And then what you'll do from there is go to templates and into templates, my templates, and any other custom template that you've made, go ahead and click on the ellipses button and do show in finder or show in explorer. That's gonna bring up this folder with all of your custom templates. That folder with the kind of nonsensical name that you downloaded from where the, the cherry blossom zip file, you're gonna drag that into this folder here and then restart Luminar and you should be able to access that cherry blossoms template on your computer. Hope that helps, Julie. All right, do you guys have any other questions for me? If you do, let me know in the chat or if you're watching the recording of this later on, make sure you put that in the comments and I check those as well as our support team checks in on those comments regularly. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you some fun ideas. I wish you guys all a really wonderful rest of your day and I will see you on Friday. Have a great one. Bye-bye everyone.